to Planet Shakers Conference 2019, Rain, live here from Melbourne, Australia. I'm Steve and this is Katie and we are so glad to have you watching wherever around the world it is that you're watching from, whether it's through Facebook Live or through our YouTube channel, Planet Shakers TV, or through our incredible partners at Daystar. We want to welcome you. Tonight is going to be out of control. Planet Shakers Conference, it's going off. It's honestly been absolutely amazing the last few days and we just want to encourage you at home, do write in, write us your questions, hashtag PSConf or hashtag Planet Shakers because we would love to make this as interactive for you at home since you couldn't be here. Absolutely. We'd love if you would follow us at Planet Shakers on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Check out our YouTube channel, Planet Shakers TV. There's so much great stuff on there. Make sure you're writing where you're from. Write us some questions. we got some amazing interviews tonight. We hope they're amazing, but they're amazing people. <laughs> uh, guest speakers and preachers for tonight. Tonight, we're going to be hearing from the one and only Pastor Art Boshoff, all Ooh. the way from CRC Church in South Africa. Oh, what an incredible night it's going to be what a powerful preacher he is i just believe it's going to be amazing it's going to be amazing we're also going to be interviewing pastor neil smith and pastor neil is one of pastor russell's longest oldest dearest friends but he is also in charge of out look he's an international uh, director exactly i was i was going to say it but then i thought we should let him say it but oh, he'll say it better than us when I we interview it. him no it's fine it. it's fine hey we also want to let you know how else you can stay connected with us and that is our planet shakers app now if you haven't downloaded this do yourself a favor and download it there are just so many things you can do on our app you can read the bible we've got um, bible reading plans for you you can listen to our podcast so it feels like you're with us on a sunday and hear the sermons that we as planet shakers church get to listen to every single week it's awesome absolutely there's, there's information about our conferences and our music downloads it will bless you so you can go to the itunes app store or the google Marketplace, I think it's called, and I'm um, going to get the Planet Shakers app. I'm so tech savvy these days. Are you proud of me? So proud. Oh my goodness. I can even turn my own computer on these days. <laughs> but um, today's been absolutely incredible. It's night time here in Melbourne. I don't know what time it is wherever you are, but um, we had uh, Pastor John Hanna this morning and then Pastor Glyn Barrett from Manchester, England, just blow us away with such incredible sermons. We have. Now, we also had the opportunity to interview some amazing people today, earlier today. One of those was Pastor Scott Lim. We didn't get as much time with him as we would like, right. but he is one of the heads of our Bible college. Now, we want to encourage you at home. Maybe God's been talking to you about a Bible college. And I guess we just want to let you know a bit more information about that because we truly believe our Bible college here at Planet Shakers is absolutely life changing. So sure don't is. just take our word for it. We're going to show you a little bit more information about that now. right now. For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. To step out in faith and to leave a place of comfort, to walk into the unknown can often seem impossible. But what if it wasn't? What if the next stepping stone to your destiny awaited you on the other side of your obedience? What if the impossible was possible? 
Come and find out at Planet Shakers College and be empowered to become all that God created you to be. Well, welcome back. Welcome to Planet Shakers Conference 2019. I'm Katie and we are coming live to you from Melbourne, Australia. And we are just so excited that you have tuned in from wherever you are around the world. Well, we've got a little treat for you coming up. I'm just gonna remind you again how you can be connected with us. But Steve right now is sneaking backstage and we are gonna hopefully interview some people on the fly for you. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, don't forget to hashtag PSConf and hashtag Planet Shakers any photos that you have. You can show us that you're at home and that you're cozied up. Maybe your babies are asleep and you're still getting to enjoy an awesome conference because we want to know that for you and we want to stand and believe with you for any prayer requests that you might have or um, share your testimonies with us. We are believing that God is going to impact you so powerfully tonight. Uh, so I, I'm just going to ask Steve if he can hear me. No, he hasn't come through yet. So stay tuned. That's coming. Um, but if you have any requests on who you might want us to interview tonight or tomorrow, why don't you send those through to us? Because we would love to get as many people as we can and ask as many questions for you so that you feel like you're part of this experience because we don't want to be, you know, a distant uh, name to you at Planet Shakers. We want to be family to you and we really want to connect with you um, as close as we possibly can. Well, if you can hear in the background, we're starting to go to a bit of a, a pre-show in the auditorium. So Hopefully that means that Steve's going to be able to find some people who are floating around in the background and are able to talk to us. So I'm just going to keep talking at you until I can hear Steve's voice and know that he's got someone for you to talk to. But as we said before, we really want to encourage you if you've been thinking about Bible College to just pray about it and see whether Planet Shakers Bible College is the right Bible College for you. Um, and don't forget to hashtag PSConf or hashtag Planet Shakers because we would love to hear what it is that you're doing. Now, I'm going to try to see if I can go live to Pastor Steve. So here we go. Are you there, Katie? Are you there? Oh, yes, I can hear you. Are you there? Hello, yes. everyone. I am backstage at Planet Shakers Conference at the pre-show and uh, uh, we're having a great time here. This is the backstage area. I'm showing you the, the secrets of how we run Planet Shakers Conference. Can you hear me okay? Yes, you're doing great. It's, it's really loud here, <laughs> but we're bet. having a great time. <laughs> so, of course, this is where everyone winds down after praise and worship. Over here, we got, um, you know, where they put their things and their drinks and their mints and all that sort of thing. You know, they got a TV so they can see the, the countdown, how long there is to go. Oh, there's me. Oh, that ugly back of that head. And um, <laughs> look, mints and all sorts of nice stuff, you know. Um, security tags, these are very important to get your way around conference, you know. Um, Good now job, we're gonna go, Steve. We're going to go out the back. Fabulous. And we're going to see what they're doing here. Right behind me. I think they're making people eat all sorts of things and doing crazy things on stage and we we do this to entertain everyone while uh while we're getting ready for the amazing session to start let me see if i can find any band members let me see let me see what i can find let me see out here through this curtain who's out here who's out here who's out here now here here are some of our amazing dancers is that you guys dancing tonight yes, sir. amazing what's your names i'm joel i'm tar Great to meet you. How long have you been part of the Planet Shakers dance team? I'm very recent, about, uh, I started last year, I reckon. So good, so good. Like two years, two years. How long have you been dancing for, your whole life? Yeah. You know, yeah, basically, basically. You know, being a child, you're just like, you know, you're always moving, yeah, so like. So good. Well, we're going live all around the world through Daystar and Facebook Live and um, you, our YouTube, our YouTube, YouTube channel. Why don't you show us some of your dance moves that you're going to do tonight? Oh! Wow! I'm not going to try any of that. Back to you in the studio. 
Well, that is awesome. I hope you enjoyed that, getting to have a little sneak peek of what it's like backstage. Uh, obviously, you could see that the crowd, the doors are already open. So that's what we do here. And we want to encourage you to come check out Planet Shakers Conference. Maybe you want to check out Planet Shakers Conference 2020. So pray about it now. Lock it in your calendar. We would love to have you here um, because there's just no, oh, what's the word? I can't even think of the word, but there is no place better to be than right here with us. Maybe you're watching from Queensland and we want to encourage you that next week we are having our Brisbane conference and would love you to be there in person. So um, we are going to interview Pastor Neil Smith very, very soon, or even Pastor Art Boshoff is coming very, very soon. So. Um, one of the main things that we are so excited about this year is, again, our fifth year of partnership with Daystar. We love them. We are so excited to be impacting you in your home. Daystar viewers, what a massive shout out. And we just want to show you a little bit more about our partners at Daystar. So check out this. Well, welcome back. Welcome to Planet Shakers Conference 2019. Rain, this is Katie and Steve bringing you live the very one and only Pastor Art Boshoff. Welcome. Thank you, Katie. It is a great, great honor and a great privilege to be here tonight. And I am super expectant for what God is going to do tonight. We are so blessed and honored that you'd be here again. Obviously, you are such great friends of our pastors, Russell and Sam Evans. How long have you known them? How did you meet them? And where did that relationship with Planet Shakers start? Well, um, through Pastor Sam, I was preaching at a conference and uh, Planet Shakers, the best music in the world, was uh, singing. And then uh, your pastor came back, Pastor Sam, and told her husband, you need to meet this man from yeah. South Africa. And then he sent Pastor Neil that everybody <laughs> knows. And then Neil connected the two of us. And um, I came here the first time for a, a, a men's conference. Wow. Well, there's been so much going on for you and the life of your church. We've been Instagram stalking you, watching your live stories. You've recently been doing a building project yes. and God has been moving miraculously in yes. your church and in the nation of South Africa. Could you maybe tell uh, the viewers at home a little bit about what God's doing, where you're from, and also about uh, your building project? I'm from South Africa, CRC. Uh, Christian Revival Church started the ministry 25 years ago and in January this year we launched our six or our third 6,000 seater building wow. in Johannesburg and we wow. opened the place full house we have thousands of people coming hundreds and hundreds are getting saved in Pretoria Johannesburg Amazing. Bloemfontein and 50 other churches wow. in South Africa and in other places in the world. We are in awe of what God is doing in your church. I see your photos that go up from your team on Twitter every single week, and we're just inspired you know, with, with what's happening. You've been to Australia many, many times, and uh, we are so blessed to have you again tonight. Uh, is it okay if we ask you, what are you planning on bringing in terms of the word tonight? What have you felt God speaking to you about to release tonight at Planet Shakers Absolutely. Conference? Absolutely. It is my honor to share and my honor to be here. I am believing God tonight for a rain of restoration wow. to fall on this place. It is a rain week and tonight I believe God is going to restore and fix broken things wow. in Jesus' name. Awesome. Well, Amen. get expecting at home. We want you to believe that. And we are believing that God's going to miraculously move in your life. Well, we thought we'd make it a little bit lighthearted for you too. Since you've been to Australia, what is your favorite Australian thing to do while you're here? I watched AFL Aussie football <laughs> yeah. for the first time. And I uh, just tonight I said I would like to do it again. I think that would become one of my favorite things that I never thought would be possible. So good. Does it compare to rugby? You know, you no, guys that, are that's so... not fair. That's not fair. That's not fair. <laughs> because it's like... <laughs> it's different. It's different. Uh, it's different. They run so far in AFL. They run like nearly yes. 20 K. So no, it's a bit different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a massive field. They have to be very fit. Awesome. Super fit. Yeah. Well, Pastor Art, we don't want to take up any more of your time. We're so blessed to have you. And um, we're going live to thousands all over the world tonight on Daystar. And so um, 
they're amazing partners for us here at Planet Shakers and Planet Shakers Conference. And so here's a bit more information for our viewers about Daystar, our amazing partners. Give you the revelation over here when you continue to walk with him. Listen to me. Here's the thing that is so potent about this message. Some translations say how he took you from darkness into marvelous light. How he took you from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. There is no weapon that is formed against me that will ever be able to prosper. He is crafting something brand new that is gonna be a masterpiece, a story. He's gonna tell with the chapters of my life. You wanna do something great for God? Get in His presence. Say, I want my moment. God, I want that moment that literally transforms me so I can transform generations. Well, hello, wherever it is in the world that you're watching from, thousands watching all over the world. We're coming to you live from Melbourne, Australia for Planet Shakers Conference 2019 Rain. We are about to go live to the night session of day three. Pastor Ark Boshoff is going to be preaching, but we've got Planet Shakers Band about to start. I'm so excited. We are so excited and we hope you are at home and we are believing this is going to be the best message you have ever heard and your life is going to be amazingly transformed. Make sure you connect with us at Planet Shakers on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on our YouTube channel, Planet Shakers TV. We want to stay connected with you. Would you let us know what country, where in the world you're watching from? We are so blessed to have you. Uh, God bless you. Yeah, we are so, so, so excited. We cannot wait for tonight. We're just believing that it's going to be so awesome. And we're ready to go. Let's go. Live, Planet Shakers.
Daystar or you're watching online, let's put our hands together and welcome everybody watching on TV and online. Welcome to Planet Shakers Conference. Today was a very special day. One, because we're here at Planet Shakers Conference. But number two is because we released our brand new album, Rain Part Two. So if you haven't already done so, you need to head, a, head to Apple Music or iTunes or YouTube or Spotify and get your copy today because all these songs we're singing, or most of them, are on there. And this next song we're going to sing is on there. It's called I Choose You. Turn to the person next to you and say, I don't choose you. I choose Jesus. Turn to the other person and tell them, you look amazing, but I still don't choose you. I choose Jesus. Come on, let's choose Jesus tonight. Here we go. So many things they fight for my attention. So I shift my gaze in your direction Yeah, I love
It's so good to have you here tonight. And if you are watching online or on Daystar, we're so privileged to have you as well tuning in. And I want to invite you, if you're down the front, don't go anywhere. You can stay where you are. We've got a few quick announcements. We do. Who has been having the most amazing conference so far? Come on, God is so good. But guess what? We have launched already our Planet Shakers 2020 conference, Glory. Yay! And you can register for that. So we want to encourage you. It is at the early bird price right now of only $20. So come on, why don't you register? Register for a friend, a family member. We want to encourage you to do that. You can register online at register.planetshakers.com or you can head on out to the foyer. There'll be a stand out there, but we want to encourage you to come along next year. That is right. It's going to be the cheapest it ever is. And so make sure that you get on out there and get them while they are early. And also while you're in the foyer, why don't you head on out to the resource stand? Who's got some fresh resource while they've been here at conference? Few people, you can still uh, head on out there. We've got trackies, we've got the shorts, we've got the bum bags, we've got the socks. You name it, it's out there until it is all sold out. And so why don't you make your way on out there and do yourself a favour, pick up Rain Part 2. It is available worldwide today. It is incredible, as Pastor Joss said earlier. And so why don't you get that on out in the foyer? Awesome, and we want to encourage you guys to be posting on social media all of the amazing encounters, the testimonies of how God has moved in your life. We don't want to miss anyone to miss out on what God has been doing here in our lives at Planet Shakers Conference. So why don't you post, why don't you hashtag PSConf um, on all 
digital platforms and this is pretty cool. If you would like some exclusive photos of conference, because we have an amazing media team, you can head to daystar.com slash planet shakers right up there on the screen and you can grab some exclusive photos to post all over your social media. Come on, fantastic. And who knows that tonight is going to be incredible. Come on, absolutely amazing. And uh, our final announcement is if you took a World Vision sponsor card last night, if you took one of them and it has a child on it, please make sure that you head on out to the stand out in the foyer because it doesn't just represent a child, it is a child. And so if you walk out here and don't hand it back in, they won't be sponsored. So please make sure that you head on out to World Vision and check out all of our sponsors as well. But come on, why don't you turn your eyes to the screen tonight for Planet Shakers News. Hi everyone, I am Fabian from our Cape Town campus. Welcome to night three of Planet Shakers conference. We trust you've had the best day and this is Planet Shakers News. to give you a hope and a future. To step out in faith and to leave a place of comfort, to walk into the unknown can often seem impossible. But what if it wasn't? What if the next stepping stone to your destiny awaited you on the other side of your obedience? What if the impossible was possible? Come and find out at Planet Shakers College and be empowered to become all that God created you to be. Give you the revelation over here when you continue to walk with him. Listen to me. Here's the thing that is so potent about this message. Translations say how he took you from darkness into marvelous light. How he took you from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. There is no weapon that is formed against me that will ever be able to prosper. He is crafting something brand new that is going to be a masterpiece, a story he's going to tell with the chapters of my life. You want to do something great for God? Get in His presence. Say, I want my moment. God, I want that moment that literally transforms me so I can transform generations.
that's all for Planet Shakers News. I'm Jake from our Planet Shakers Geelong campus. Remember, tomorrow is our very last day, so do absolutely everything that you can to be there, and we'll see you tomorrow. Are you ready to worship Planet Shakers? Oh, haven't we been having the best time over the last few days? Oh, three people have had the best time. What about the rest of you? It's been amazing how God has been moving and how God's rain has been poured out every single day. And it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So I don't know about you, but I, I cannot wait to see what God is gonna do here in this room. I think there's some miracles. I think there's some breakthroughs. I think there's some deliverances. I think there's some salvations in this house tonight. And so again, we're gonna position ourselves. So. Come on, forget about that person next to you. Lift your hands to Him. Turn your hearts towards Him. Get your focus on King Jesus. He's going to sing over us tonight.
me here. So take. That's right. God wants to take you higher tonight. Yeah. So take us higher. Yeah. Yeah. Just lift your hands to heaven all over this room. Holy Spirit, I thank you. You are here. Thank you that every person is watching us on Daystar, watching us online, in worshiping with us who you are. I pray tonight that we will leave this place different than what we came. I ask you to pour out your spirit in an unprecedented way. We are hungry for you. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. There's so much more God's going to do in this next 90 minutes. Keep your hunger high. Keep your hunger high. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm hungry. I'm hungry for God. Go back and grab your seats. As you're taking your seats, Tomorrow, everyone say tomorrow. Tomorrow in the morning session, we only have one morning session. One morning session. It's not at 9.30, it's at 10 a.m. So you can sleep in a little bit. 10 a.m., everyone say 10 a.m. We're gonna have, we're gonna have an anointing service. We're going to pray for every person that wants prayer. And uh, the powerhouse of Planet Shakers, Pastor Sam, will be there speaking. She always brings an amazing word. This year, the Lord spoke to me and said, it's a year of breakthrough and a year of glory. John Hanna, Pastor John Hanna says, God spoke to him, it's a year of open doors. Well, an open door is a place of breakthrough. An open door that God opens is a place where his weight, his glory is. I was in South Africa just recently at Pastor Arts opening his, I wasn't opening, but I was there celebrating the opening of his new building, 6,000 seater in Johannesburg, packed out first Sunday. Amazing, amazing. By the way, his church is over 100,000 people in South Africa. Amazing what God is doing. And, uh, and the theme from their church is a year of glory. And it's like, I feel like God's saying something. And when I begin to talk about breakthrough guest services, you can hand out the giving cards. When I begin to Think about breakthrough. You know, one of the symbols we have is, is an illustration of what happens when you break the sound barrier. You go from subsonic to supersonic. How many know that God wants you to go from natural to supernatural? How many know He wants you to go from ordinary to extraordinary? And the diagram that illustrates breaking the sound barrier is circle, it starts with a circle, which represents a sound, your sound. And then another sound comes together, and that's someone else's sound. Then all of a sudden, there is this momentum that's created through sound. Everyone say, sound. And then what happens is, it creates momentum, and then when it's focused, it breaks through any resistance, any turbulence, and it goes through and goes through to supersonic realms. You know, your sound isn't just what you make with your voice. Your sound is what you release through your life. 
In fact, you're a person. That's what they describe you as. A word for a human is person, which is a Latin phrase where you get per son. Per means flow through. Son means sound, sonic. So our lives are the sounds that flow through. So we should let the sounds of generosity flow through our lives. The sounds of encouragement flow through our lives. The sounds of breakthrough flow through our lives. The sound of heaven should flow through our lives. Jesus was the personification of the Father. He was the sound of the Father on earth. You know, every time you and I give, what we are doing is bringing our sound our money, our time, our passion, and joining it with someone else's sound, and that creates a moment of breakthrough. The Bible puts it this way. One will put a 1,000 to flight. Two will put 10,000 to flight. In other words, something supernatural happens when there's agreement. You know, one of the greatest ways you can agree is give. I hear people all the time say, God, let there be a revival. And I hear the Father say, go and be the revival. Sometimes we pray for what God has actually given us. And tonight, we are taking up a supersonic breakthrough Offering, You know, offerings are free will. No one's under any obligation to give. But here's the truth. To pay for this, your registration or your ticket doesn't get anywhere near it. Why? Because we decided we wanted to, to get people to partner with their sound in giving and offerings instead of just paying for a ticket. Tonight... I'm believing that there's something so supernatural is released into this city, into the nation, and into the nations. Literally, literally. We've been doing Planet Shakers for 22 years. You know how many millions of people have been impacted because every night we've taken up an offering to pay for the event. And in the event, people encounter God, they get healed, they get vision, they sometimes find their future partner. Anything can happen. But it happens because breakthrough happens. Because people bring their sound, their money, their passion, their energy. You know, the worship was absolutely off the chart tonight. But imagine if no one sang. There wouldn't be that breakthrough. Well, imagine if no one gave, we wouldn't be here next year. In actual fact, we're going to Brisbane from here, and we need a supernatural offering here so we can pay for Brisbane, because Brisbane is a new place that we're going to, and it always costs us more at startups. So I want to encourage every person tonight. Would you come and bring your sound? There's many ways you can give. I don't know anyone that gives by check. But by the way, all you're giving, if you want tax deductibility, you can get it tonight if you give to the Planet Shakers Trust Fund. You can text to give that number set up. You can do bank transfer. You can give by credit card. You can give in cash. Or as I say, Always, no one's under any obligation to give. But when you have a revelation of what Jesus has done, Old Testament, they gave because they have to. New Testament, they gave because they want to. Why? Because they heard the sound of the Father through the Son, and they wanted to release His sound on the earth. You know, literally, literally, from this night, millions of people are online, on television, around the world, encountering Jesus. It's because you brought a sound 
And as you sow with your finances, you're sowing a sound for someone's breakthrough as well as your own. So I'm not going to tell you to look at the screens because you're busy filling in things. I'm going to get you to listen to the screens as we come and we bring a breakthrough offering. Father, I release breakthrough in this place right now. Let this offering be over six figures in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. I speak it in faith, in faith right now. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the first video. There's two videos. We're going to come and bring our offering. For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. To step out in faith and to leave a place of comfort, to walk into the unknown can often seem impossible. But what if it wasn't? What if the next stepping stone to your destiny awaited you on the other side of your obedience? What if the impossible was possible? Come and find out at Planet Shakers College and be empowered to become all that God created you to be. Those who are, we got an amazing college. You can get a degree. It will change your life. I don't just believe in giving education. I believe in giving impartation. But at the same time, you'll get education and information. But the most important thing out of that, it's not a theory, it will be a lifestyle. We've got people who lecture with PhDs. We've got people who are experienced the best in their field. And if God's speaking to you, I want to encourage you to go to our Bible college and stand and check it out. Are we ready for our second video? Awesome. Before we say that, I want to set this up. 2020, Planet Shakers Band are going to be playing in Israel. And we're going to have, as part of Empower 21, we're going to have this trip that we're going to invite people to come and be a part of. There'll be over five, 6,000 worshippers in the Holy Land. If you've never been to Israel, it is life-changing. If you've been to Israel, come again. And we want to encourage you to come and join us. Here's the video. Also, next year, the cheapest you can get your registrations, $20 now. $20. You think about this. This event costs $1.4 million to put on. Just to hire this venue is over $400,000. I say that so easily, don't I? But you can get the cheapest ticket registration now. And I want to encourage you to do it in faith. And say, I, if you're a pastor, I'm going to bring this amount of people. If you're part of Planet Shakers Church, think of how many people you can invite and pay for. I, uh, this year, um, one year I actually went to get 20 and I bought 200 by accident. I wanted a refund, but I felt God say, no, you get 200 people there. And guess what? I got 200 people there. <laughs> so... Hey, my shoes look good up there. No, that's all right. <laughs> How are we going with the offering? You, tell, you, you need me to rave on it a little bit more. Okay, cool. I'm so excited about tomorrow. And by the way, tomorrow, this is how, 10 a.m., then 5 p.m., when we're doing, a, we're doing two night session, 5 p.m., Planet Boom are taking over, but everybody's invited. Planet Boom are going to be in the house. And so Planet Boom worship team, Planet Boom dancers, Planet Boom 
preaching, and then five o'clock, that will go to what time, Jimmy? 6.45. And then we'll start the next session at 7.30. It's going to be an awesome way to finish. And we are going to pack it out again. In actual fact, we haven't even let anyone come in for free at nights this year because it's so cheap to come, people should just register. Yeah, 13,000 people have registered for this conference. We have a thousand children in a conference right now. So that's cool. We're good, okay. One of my best friends in all the world, but not just my best friend, he is so inspiring to me. Whenever I get around him, I feel bigger, I feel stronger, I have more faith, I love his tenacity, I love his passion. But you know the thing I love? As, as strong as Pastor Art is physically and also spiritually, he has such a soft heart for people. You should see his church. I wish I could take you there one day. It is amazing. It, I get to speak there. And it's one of my highlights in my year. And I would just go to hang out with him because he is a lion. He's from Africa and he's got the roar. And we are so honored to have him here tonight. Come on, the Bible says give honor where honor is due. Would you welcome Pastor Art Bashoff. Come on, planet shakers, if we're going to clap, let's clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, Before we do business tonight, God's kingdom business, I want everybody to stand to their feet. And we're going to ask this amazing pastor and his beautiful wife, this powerhouse that leads this worship in this house, Pastor Sam, uh, 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 just to come here. Um, You know, um, the Bible says we give honor where honor is due. We don't glorify men but we honor them. So we take time out to honor the two of you. And I know Pastor Sam, listen, doesn't want me to say this, but I'm going to say it. I asked her permission. It's her birthday today. Oh, come on. She asked, am I going to sing? I say, I can't sing. I can croak. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, Pastor Sam. Day to you. Come on, what an amazing woman changing this world. We love you. We honor you. We have the greatest respect for you. Oh, come on, you need to know the leaders that God gave you. We salute you. You are generals in the kingdom. You are a powerhouse. I'm bringing you to Africa. I said, when I stood up there and uh, you were leading praise, I said to your, your husband, almost I said your pastor, I said, please, he's not coming to Dream Week alone. He's your pastor, okay? Um, you coming as well, please. And you're going to bless us. We love you. You're an incredible woman of God. You carry tremendous power and you inspire people all around this world. We love you, both of you. Really, you are my heroes and my inspiration. Come on, let's give it up for them. Um, at two o'clock this morning, God woke me up, changed my, uh, uh, changed my message, and um, um, I want you to turn to somebody uh, before you take your seat and tell that person, uh, uh, stand up again, please, okay, work with the African, uh, the clumsy African, um, uh, 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 say to that person, uh, you, uh, you better get ready. Tell that person you better, you better get ready. Because tonight, God is going to relocate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come on, if you are ready for rain tonight, give the Lord a praise in the house. Hallelujah. I I know that God will gather thousands of people to get one person's attention. I believe that this word tonight is for one person. I don't know who it is. 
But I know that God will gather a million people to get a hold of one person to relocate you, to bring you back to the place that He wants you to be. So I want you for a moment, although we enjoy the atmosphere and we're going to praise God together, I want you tonight to almost sit in a bubble, in a vacuum, and I want you to listen what God is saying to you. Big shout out to Pastor Bishop John Hanna. We love you too, uh, uh, too much. Amen. We love you. What a great man of God carries the power of God. Dr. Chris Hillier as well. We love you. We keep loving you. We keep honoring you. And all the brothers, all the pastors, come on, let's give a big hand clap for them, of course, for, uh, for day start tonight. Pastor Marcus and Joni Lamb, we love you. You are two generals of God changing the world. And it is an honor to know you and to be part of what God is doing on your channel. Come on, a big shout out, a big hand clap. Today start tonight in Jesus' name. Now we're going to change the atmosphere. Take your seat. And I want to read in Judges chapter 16. And I want to read from verse 15. The Bible says, Then she said to him, how can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three day times and, I've, and have not told me where your great strength lies. And it came to pass when she pestered him daily with her words and pressed him so that his soul was vexed to death that he told her all his heart and he said to her, no razor has ever come upon my head for I have been a Nazarite for God from my mother's womb. If I am shaven, then strength will leave me and I shall become weak and be like other men. I mean, there's so much in the scripture. I just want to say tonight, thank God for the right woman, but you better run from the wrong woman. Can I have an amen from a brother in the know here tonight? Come on, let's talk some, uh, some truth here tonight. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines saying, come up at once for he has told me all his heart. So the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hand. And they, she lulled him to sleep on her knees. She lulled him to sleep on her knees and called to a man and had him shave the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him and his strength left him. She began to torment him and his strength left him. And she said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he woke from his sleep and he said, I will go out as before at the other time and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. Then the Philistines took him and they took out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. Then they bound him with a bronze fetter and he became a grinder in the prison however the hair on his head began to grow again i'm here to tell somebody tonight that the hair on your head is gonna grow again i'm here to tell somebody tonight that god has not given up on you that god has not abandoned you that god has not forsaken you Maybe your brothers left you, but God will not leave you. Maybe your friend turned his back on you, but God will not leave you. I don't know what you are facing. Maybe you're grinding away in life. Like this man, Samson, a very gifted man. Think about him. A privileged young man that grew up in a privileged home, raised to be a Nazarite under the Nazarite vow. Never was his head to be shaven. Never was he to touch anything unclean, dead bodies. Never was he to consume any alcohol, but he violates all three of them. And if you study, you will see he's a young man with tremendous gifting, but very little character. <laughs> you know, if your character takes you where your gift is, or your gift takes you where your character has not been developed, you, you're not gonna last. So. Not only do we need the power of God, we need a Joseph generation that will be a servant generation 
a generation that will develop character for the big time. And sometimes God develops your character in the least likely place, in what you think is a prison, or even in a pit, or even maybe at a millstone, grinding away. We understand that Samson was the cause of his own grinding. But there are people sitting here tonight who are grinding away against the pressure of life. You've lost your vision. You've lost your hope. You're in a place of not really knowing what the future holds for you. And it feels like God has forsaken you. God has abandoned you. But I want to tell you, and that's the title of my message, your hair will grow again. Your hair will grow again. God will be merciful to you one more time. Come on. The latter part of your life will be the best years of your life. Bump the person next to you and say, you ain't seen nothing yet. You are not defined by your failure, by your mishap, by your mistakes. I mean, Samson is in prison. His eyes has been taken from him. Think about the emotional trauma. Think about the regret. Think about every day waking up thinking I could have been that man or that woman of God living in the grind of regret. I've met how many people the other day I prayed for a lady with cancer and she said, Pastor, I deserve this. I said, you don't. She said, I've been living in sin. Satan is beating so many people over the head because of their mistakes. But I want to tell you tonight that God is still the same. That God does not remember your past. That God will turn your mistake into a miracle. God will turn your setback into a comeback. God will turn your tragedy into a triumph. Oh, come on. In the name of Jesus, God will take you from your almost to your utmost. Because God never changes His mind concerning you. It doesn't matter how many times you fall. The Bible says a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again. Somebody is going to get up tonight. Somebody is going to believe again tonight. Somebody is going to dream tonight. Somebody is going to go further. Than, oh, come on, I'm talking to a young person here tonight. You are not defined by your yesterday. You are not defined by your failure. You are defined by the love and the mercy and the grace of Jesus. You may be in a prison tonight, but I want to tell you, you are not beyond God's reach. That God has not abandoned you. That God has not forsaken you. Maybe people betrayed you. Maybe people forsook you. Maybe you messed up big time. I don't know. But I want to tell you that your hair will grow again. And even those that have given up on you, they're going to see the bald patches disappear. They're going to see the shadow disappear. They're going to see the hurt disappear. They're going to see the depression disappear. They're going to see the sickness and the, and the disease leave your body because God is not about to abandon His people. Your hair will grow again. Maybe as a pastor, you're living in a place between two places. I don't know. Maybe you've settled for something less. I don't know. But if we could see in Samson's mind, at the grind, I think the worst place to be is a place of regret, a place of shame. Oh, you can stand and shout hallelujah, but inside there's a sound of regret. You can stand and sing, let it rain, but still inside you are struggling with shame or guilt. I'm here to tell you, that your guilt, your shame, your mistake, your flaw, your failure will not separate you from a God who loves you, a God who will never cancel you, a God who will never turn his back on you, a God who knows everything about you and chooses to love you. Oh, come on. If you believe it tonight, jump to your feet and give Jesus a 10-second pray. I mean, Samson is a mighty warrior. He, uh, he's, a, he's a genetic freak. He's an anointed freak. Um, 
he's a preach freak. And then he messes up. And it wasn't the first time he messed up. He messed up many times. As a matter of fact, he had a pattern of messing up again and again and again. And still God was with him. But then one day he crossed a line. Like Rick Godwin says, you can have seven steps to success, but one step to failure. And then people leave you there. People say, that's who Samson is. But God doesn't. God comes to him in the prison. I want you to think about that. The mercy of God reaches out to him while the church criticizes him. The mercy of God gets out of heaven into a sinful world in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and reaches out to you and me because God cannot keep himself away from people that he loves. While he's at the grind, blinded, you know, it's a terrible thing to, to feel that God left you. I've spoken to people and they say, Pastor, I, I've done something that caused God to leave me. And, and they still go through the motions, but you can see that glint, that glow, that look of confidence, that fire. It's not in their eyes. They begin to doubt themselves, which is the worst kind of doubt that you can have. And I want to tell you there's one place for your restoration. As this conference says, there's one place for restoration, and that is you back in the presence of a loving God, a God that will rain mercy and grace upon you, a God who will treat you better than you deserve, a God who will love you when everybody else rejects you, a God that will never abandon you, a God who says nothing can separate you from the love that I have for you. Your hair will grow again. And the mockers and the scoffers and those that that have written you off will have to see the sign of God's mercy. Because I tell you, my brother, I tell you, my sister, your latter days will be greater. I tell you, my brother, I tell you, my sister, that God is going to restore you for His glory in Jesus' name. God is going to take you further. God is going to take you higher. But this time, you will be like a Jacob. You will have a, a lump. You will walk differently because you will realize I'm not strong in myself. I need the grace, the mercy of God. You will walk with a limp because you've wrestled with God. You've wrestled with man and you've prevailed, but now you've wrestled with God in your place of weakness. Like the Apostle Paul, you've had to learn how to become weak. You've had to learn how to become dependent on the grace and the mercy of God. Not your gift and not your talent, not your smarts and not your shops, because your smarts and your shops will get you so far. But I want to tell you, the grace of God and the love of God and the mercy of God will take you places you never thought impossible, even if you have have a label or a tag and people say there comes Samson there comes Jonah it doesn't matter when you go God is going to go with you and your lump is going to be stronger than your previous confident gait because God's going to get the glory all you have to do is what Samson did his hair begins to grow he's blinded he's lost vision he's lost his strength You know, this is a supernatural walk. It's never going to change. This is not hype. (laughs) Not long ago, if you're not connected to the vine, to the source, if you're not plugged in, the hype won't do it. Oh, we get hyped up like, I'm a little bit hyped up, I'm going home because there's somebody waiting for me, not only my dog, my wife. Amen. Amen. So we come to church, we get hyped up, but more than that, David says, I've come to the sanctuary to look for you. In my moments of weakness, I look for you. This Christianity, faith is not denial. Faith is crying out to a God of mercy. Faith is being honest with who you are and where you've been. Faith is coming to the throne of grace with boldness to obtain mercy in a time of healing. Faith is not acting up. It's not straightening your gait. It's allowing the mercy of God to touch you. There's something amazing about God's mercy, defined as God's willingness and God's ability to treat you better than you deserve, and I suggest we all need it. Every preacher in this room, because people don't even know your private battle, but God does. He has a caution for all of us. When God gives you an instruction, a word, then treasure that word and sanctify the word of the Lord in your heart. If God says don't, it means don't. But Samson was going to play 
with fire because you get those personalities that like to push the boundaries and the barriers. And he pushed it a little bit too far. Then he burned. Very gifted, talented, he, he, he burns. Think what all the other people said about him. Think what Israel said about him. He's in prison. Where's Samson? Samson is in prison. Samson is grinding. Sometimes people grind away at life because of things that happen, things other people do. In Africa, I know we've come through a system of apartheid and by far the majority of our nation are in a place that they never chose. They were born in an unfair dispensation. Many of them had to go through the grind all the time and say, but where is God? This God that I'm praying to, where is God? And God heard their prayer. And I want to tell you that God's hearing your prayer for your child. God is hearing your prayer for your husband. God is hearing your prayer for your son, for your daughter. Oh, for your church, for your, oh, come on, somebody that prays and believes that God is moving in your life. God has heard your prayer. And when you least expect it, just when you want to quit, your hair will begin to grow your hair and your wife's going to say to you honey what's happening it seems like there's more hair amen every bold, bold bold person says amen suddenly things are different you think different you walk different suddenly you feel different you wake up in the morning and you're not feeling so depressed your hair's growing suddenly the pain is left and le less in your body your hair's growing Suddenly, uh, somebody is kind, that, that was nasty. Your hair is growing. God is being merciful unto you in your prison. Sometimes we want to walk out the prison to experience God's mercy. God says, no, in the grind, in your lowest place, David said. Even when I descend into hell, God, you are there. If I descend into the lower parts of the earth, even there your hand shall lead me and guide me. God, you are always with me. But sometimes it's the inner battles that people have that nobody knows about that hijacks them and stops them. It is the battle that causes them to go around the same place again and again. Rejection, fear, abandonment, depression, regret, shame. I believe tonight it's a night of restoration. I believe tonight that the heavens are open over this place. I believe tonight that the rain of God is going to fall upon your life. It's going to fall upon your marriage. Oh, come on. If you believe it, lift your hands to Jesus tonight and say, let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain on my life, Lord. Let it rain. Oh, God, be merciful unto me in the name of Jesus. When that rain comes, everything will change because God says it will be showers of blessing. Showers of blessing that will turn your morning into dancing, your sorrow into joy, your, 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 your sackcloth and ashes into a spirit of joy and jubilee in Jesus' name. I'm not going to live with a cloud of guilt over my mind any longer. I'm going to hop and I'm going to skip and I'm going to dance and I'm going to believe that God has forgiven me, that God has restored me. Oh, come on, someone in this place, give the Lord a shout of praise. Um, I've been in the ministry now 34 years. I am 54 also. Uh, one of our pastors, John Anna, is 55. I'm a 64 model. And uh, been in the ministry now 34 years. And, um, you know, when you, when you walk with the Lord a little bit, not that you know everything, you see a little bit. And you watch people, now they grow, now they go for God, and then suddenly they stop. And this life that is meant to be something easy, because Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Suddenly there's a distraction. A woman like in, in Sam's case, uh, case uh, uh, a distraction, a challenge, something that steals focus and vision and causes this anointed person, which is all of you, by the way, every single one of you have been anointed by God. Every single one of you have been chosen. That's why you cannot mess around with a church girl. You cannot mess around with a brother sitting next to you, the brother that has a plan for after the service. You have to say, this is Holy Ghost territory in Jesus' name. If you want to touch me, you touch me in my pastor's presence. Come on, can I have an amen from the girls? Satan is a trophy hunter. He'll do everything in his power 
to derail you from your destiny. And young, uh, Samson finds himself in prison and his hair begins to grow and he prays and he cries out to God. And Samson called to the Lord saying, Oh Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray. Just once more, oh God, that I may win, take one blow of vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. I, 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 I do care, but I don't care what's caused your defeat. I don't care what's knocked you down. I, it's not what got him into the prison. It's not what got him grinding away at the, at the mole that is important. That's where we want to camp. We, we, we want to talk to people about their mistakes. We want to talk to people about their problems. We want to talk to people about their mishaps, but that's not what God does. God just intervenes while you're grinding away, while, while you're struggling in life, while you're fighting those thoughts of discouragement. Nobody knows, but He does. And He comes to you, and His reign of mercy begins to fall upon you. I want to tell you that God knows you by name. I want to tell you tonight that God knows exactly where you're at. He knows your GPS, Adam. Even if you are hiding from your destiny, God is here tonight looking for you, calling you by name. It's not like God couldn't see Adam and Eve hiding behind the bush. He knew where they were, but that wasn't the deal. Think about it, people that preach sin separates you from God. When Adam sinned, God came to him in the cool of the day. <laughs> we sin and we feel bad. We feel ashamed. How long do you want to feel bad? How long do you want to carry that burden of regret? How long? Do you want to walk around like a skulking dog as if I, I, I messed up? I shouldn't have. I, I, I did something terrible. How long? Tonight you lay that burden aside. Tonight you lay that burden aside. I don't care how many times you sold your body as a woman. It's irrelevant. I don't care how many bad things you've done with your life. It's irrelevant. We've all been chained to the millstone, some of us longer than others. And we all needed a savior. And people think Jesus as savior is only for those who are unsaved. You better believe me, Christian. You need Jesus every day of your life. You need the saving grace and the saving power of Jesus every day of your life. If you know what I'm talking about, give this amazing savior of ours a ginormous praise, Australia. So Samson, Jacob, Jonah, Peter, men that ran away from God, but every time God came for them. You know, sometimes we're merciful towards sinners, but when it comes to our brothers and sisters, we take a hardline approach. Where, as the matter of fact, is when you were the furthest away from God, God reached out to you. That's why God never forsook Samson. We understand cause and effect, consequences. We understand everything. But we also understand the grace and the mercy of God. And we understand the mercy of God will take you higher than you've ever been before. Come on. Even when you fall, the Lord will uphold you with His hand. And God is going to restore you. Somebody shout, restore! a bad place in your marriage. I had a lady speak to me today. She says, Pastor, if God doesn't intervene, we're finished. Both Christians, grinding away in marriage. Grinding away at depression. Grinding away with sickness and disease. I mean, pain is not an easy thing. I recently tore three ligaments in the shoulder of mine, uh, lifting way too heavy. So I've got three torn ligaments in this shoulder, and the doctor said, I can't lift my hand like this. I'm going to tear it. Well, I, I'm going to lift my hand like this. Come on. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because we serve a God. I'm not talking about foolishness. I'm talking about understanding the mercy, the grace, the reality of the person of Jesus. Sometimes the people that preach grace and mercy the most practice it the least. Can I say it again? Sometimes people who practice grace and mercy practice it the least. Can I say it again? Sometimes people who practice, preach grace and mercy practice it the least. Can I say it again? Sometimes people who pr preach grace and mercy practice it the least.
If you walked into the presence of Jesus, the person of Jesus, there would be not an ounce of judgment, not an ounce of guilt. If you walked into the presence of Jesus, He would not point out one of your flaws and faults. As a matter of fact, if Jesus was here tonight and He is in person, He would go to the person who feels the lowest. He's going to skip the hoi polloi. He's going to go to the person that feels messed up, beaten up, frustrated. The person that everybody thinks, wow, he's okay. And that person is not okay. He knows and he cares. Stop the act, man. Stop the act. If there's an act, stop the act. You're not going to last. Stop the act. Be honest. Be real. Be truthful before you are tied to the mill as well. And let God work in your life and honor the word that God gives you as a young person. When God says he's the wrong guy, he's the wrong girl, then listen what God says. Or that relationship will take you where you don't want to go. And I have an amen. You're not a painting over here. An amen. It's like young people don't want to be alone. What are you talking about? I was young as well, some stage man. And while everybody was clubbing, I was praying. And I think I'm better off than most of them. When everybody was going to discos and people were dating, I was spending time in the presence of God. Because that cool boy with the abs is not going to do it for you. That girl with a low and behold dress is not going to do it for you. That person that shakes the hips and you think, I, 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 I need something, I need, I need something. That person is going to take you to a place where you don't want to be. You're a church girl, be a church girl. Please do us all a favor. Say, if you're a church girl, be a church girl. If you're a church girl, be a church girl. Can I have an Amen. I mean, the brothers don't want to have to look to the heavens when you walk in. I'm not being legalistic. Sometimes the only way brothers can serve the Lord is they have to look up. We're in this world, we're not of this world. And we have a treasure that this world doesn't have. We have a treasure that we don't want to lose. We don't want to negotiate. Well, some of us were blind. Now we're blind again. Looking to a place that never satisfied you before. And God brought you from that. And it's like, what have I left behind? Nothing. People say, I gave up everything for Jesus. You never did. You gave up death. You gave up sin. You gave up disaster. You gave up calamity. You've only gained by giving your life to Jesus Christ. I gave up a boy. What was that boy doing? Where was that boy taking you? You gave up nothing. You gave up death when you gave your life to Jesus. All you did was gain, gain life. You receive forgiveness. Oh, come on, there's no price to it. You receive peace. There's no price to it. You receive joy. There's no price to it. You receive resurrection life. There's no price to it. You receive destiny. You receive the presence of God. Everything else is but for a moment. And I wish I could jump over there and get my hands on you because once you taste and see that God is good, you no longer want to taste what this world has to offer. You don't look at the world with longing eyes because you have been touched. You have been like David. I have tasted and I've seen that the Lord is good. This marijuana never did it for me. That cocaine never did it for me. The clubbing never did it for me. Another relationship never did it to me. But when I was blind, God was merciful unto me and my hair began to grow and He opened my eyes and I saw Jesus, hallelujah. I was lost, but now I'm found. I'm on my way to heaven. If you are born again today, give the Lord a praise in this house. Oh, come on, praise Him a little bit. Praise Him a little bit like a choir in heaven. Praise Him a little bit because you are born again. Praise Him a little bit because your sins are forgiven. Praise Him a little bit that you have been washed in the blood of Jesus. But it's when we forget the mercy of God that we get in trouble. And we begin to treat people outside of mercy. Um, somebody showed a picture of the Ark of the Covenant and the two cherubim over the mercy seat points to one another and they, their wings touch one another. 
which is God saying, my house must be a house of mercy. We have to touch the sinner with mercy. We have to touch the fallen with mercy. Because where there's not the seat of mercy, a holy God cannot manifest himself because he manifests himself on the seat of mercy. Every time in the Old Testament, I mean, Jonah has a bad attitude. He runs from the presence of God and God comes to him, prepares a whale, a safety net. God always has a safety net for you because God knows everything about you. He doesn't abandon you. He doesn't give up on you. And I'm here to tell somebody, because I had another message that I was prepared to preach. And I tell you, two o'clock this morning, I didn't sleep. God said, somebody, somebody needs this. Somebody with great destiny needs this. Tell them, tell them, I have not abandoned them. Tell them, I know how they feel. I have not forsaken them. Tell them, tell them their hair will grow again. Tell them, I will give them another run in it. I will give them another run in it. I will give them another run in it. I will give you another run of it. Your hair will grow again, but it comes tonight when you maybe feel the lowest. And all God wants you to do is the same thing He did throughout the Bible. He just says, turn to me, turn to me. Don't turn away from me in your pride, in your anger, um, in, your, in, in, in your regret, because all those things really are rooted in, in self-pride that how could I mess up like this? How could I do this? How, 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 how long are you going to say how, how, how long, how long, how long? I've been through my third marriage. That woman at the well of Samaria had five husbands. The one she was living with was not a husband. Jesus never condemned her. He loved her. He lowered himself. He crossed the racial barrier and he accepted her and gave her what nobody else ever gave her. Because in those years, the Jews treated the Samaritans less than dogs. That's why she said, Jesus, how is it that you, a Samarit- that you, a Jew, ask me a Samaritan? Because the Jews so despised the Samaritans. And yeah, Jesus comes and he just crosses over in any case. And he gets to her level. And he addresses her greatest need, which is the need for, of unconditional love, which is the need of acceptance. I belong. I had five husbands. And that's not the conversation. She was just honest. She says, the one I'm living with is not my husband. Now, maybe she became a player because women get smart as well. Amen. We don't know what happened to her five husbands. Maybe she poisoned them. I don't know. But sometimes people that have been abused, I know in Africa, they become, they become not the victim, but the master. So they plead victimization, but they actually use the power they learn through being victimized to manipulate. And maybe she was like this. We don't know. doesn't matter. We don't know what happened to the five husbands. All we know is that Jesus was tired and he says, I must go through Samaria for this one woman. He just leaves a revival for one person. That's how important you are for God tonight. I want to say to every preacher, never look at the size of the invitation or the size of the crowd. Never forget it's about the individual, that one person that God wants to touch. Come on. If you believe that God loves you tonight, jump to your feet and give him the biggest praise that you can in Jesus' name. It's going to give you one more run. And Joe, uh, Samson in his final years did more <laughs> than he did self-reliant, confident, gifted, smart in one moment. It's all it takes, a moment, a moment. And tonight, some of you are going to have your moment, a moment in God's presence. It's all you need, a moment, a moment, a moment. I don't care what go, I don't care building about you. I don't care what label you carry. Paul studied under Gamaliel. Paul was one of the most educated, learned men of his day. He fiercely persecuted the church, and Jesus knocks him down and calls him. Some of you have never been called. You've never been touched, and some of you have forgotten the power of God's call upon your life, that the gifts and the call of God are without repentance, and it's the goodness of God that leads to, rep- uh, to repentance. If you actually study Paul, in re- study, study for pastors to do uh, Romans chapter 1, everybody gets stuck in Romans chapter 1, and Paul is actually, um, uh, uh, before, because he's so called, 
to bring the gospel to Rome. He almost dies on the way there. And then he, he sets the tone of a Roman citizen, the debauchery, the sexual promiscuity, and every kind of sin that is in existence. And everybody stays there. But then he goes to chapter 2, chapter 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And he talks about the solution. He talks about the remedy. He talks about the answer. He talks about the mercy and the grace of God, which is the answer to a Roman city that is in debauchery and that is in caught in every foul sin because the gospel of Jesus Christ is still the power of God unto salvation. We need to preach it without apology and we need to believe it because we will not be restored outside of it your hair will begin to grow again I want no one to move around now please this is a holy moment please if if it's a woman that needs to go to the toilet fine but men tie it get rid of that restless spirit in you Discern when the presence of God moves. Sometimes Jesus will keep 5,000 to touch one because the one matters. I want every head bowed, every eye closed, no one moving in this place. Watching on Daystar in America, there's no distance in the realm of the Spirit. Maybe you're sitting in front of that television and you have decided to quit the ministry. I'm telling you, don't. Maybe you are thinking, I'm going to do something else. I'm telling you, don't. Maybe you're sitting in, in a relational turmoil. I, I want to tell you that allow God to work. Turn to Him, even as Samson did. It's all you have to do. You don't have to work your way back to God. Just turn to Him and accept what is happening already, that the chains are already falling off. The, throughout this conference, the, the hold of Satan has been broken over your life. Throughout this conference, your eyes are opening more and more and more. And you realize, I don't want this other life. I want this Jesus life. I want this Jesus life. I don't want to live that other life out there. I want this Jesus life. You're sitting here tonight, you've never given your life to Jesus. Or maybe at one time you did, but you've grown cold and you've wandered away from Jesus Christ. You won't find peace anywhere else. You will find peace in the relationship with Jesus. This is not a religion. And I want to tell you, my dear friend, when you die, there's not a purgatory. You're not going to come back one day as a dog or a cockroach or something else. You have this one life. And the Bible says it's appointed for men once to die and then the judgment. You have this one life. The Bible says we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible says while we were sinners, Jesus died. God demonstrated His love by sending Jesus to die for us. The Bible says whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I don't know where you are tonight, but God knows and He cares. He loves you. And you're sitting here tonight, you say, Pastor, I don't have peace with Jesus. If I died tonight, I don't even think I'll go to heaven. Or maybe like the prodigal son, you serve God, but you've wandered away from Him. I want to pray for you tonight. I want to help you find your way back to Jesus. There is no other way. John chapter 14, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. There is one way. His name is exalted above every other name. There is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus. And tonight is ye are not as your judge, but as your merciful high priest calling you, come unto me. All you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come unto me. Every head bowed believer spraying, you say, Pastor, that's me. There's something happening in my heart tonight. I need a new beginning with God, a fresh start. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to come back to Jesus tonight. I need God to forgive my sin. If that's your desire tonight, wherever you are, God wants you to know that your hair will grow again as you come back to Him in Jesus' name. If that's you tonight, every head bowed, bowed every eye closed. Tonight you yeah, I want peace with God, a fresh start with God. I want to give my life to Jesus. If that's you tonight, quietly, wherever you are, just slip your hand up in the name of Jesus. I want to say a prayer for you all over this place. Raise your hand up high, 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 all over. Raise it, raise it, raise it, raise it. Many hands. God bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Raise it. Raise it up. Right up there. Raise it up. Raise it up. Raise it up. 
There's a heaven to gain a hell to shun. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Last time before I pray, lift your hand up. You've not yet raised your hand. You say, I don't understand it, but there's a stirring in my heart. Tonight, I want peace with God. Tonight, I need a new beginning with Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. You've not yet raised your hand. Forget your friends. Slip your hand up now. The greatest decision I ever made. My two friends never did. I did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Many hands everywhere. Please work with me. Work with me because we need law and order in this building. So all over this place, work with a preacher from Africa, please. Everybody, if you've raised your hand, everybody, please, on the count of three, just stand to your feet. Work with me. Everybody, please stand up. Stand up. Nobody leaving the building now. Come on. Come on. This is a holy moment. We're going to pray for two things tonight. Everybody that raised their hand, I want to pray for you right here. We call this the altar where you're going to have an encounter with God. No matter where you are, how long it takes, I'm going to wait for you to come down to this altar and I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to lead you back to Jesus Christ tonight. Maybe you brought a friend, your love, your encouragement will bring your friend to Jesus tonight. So all over this place, if you raised your hand, you want to get right with God, you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to leave your seat wherever you are. Bring your personal belongings so it doesn't disappear. Don't think about it. Leave your seat wherever you are and come and give yourself to Jesus tonight. Come on, 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 come on. Come on. Oh, come on, Jesus loves you. Come on, Christian, clap your hands because the angels in heaven rejoice. Come home, come to the Savior. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, come on. There's a voice in your heart saying, walk down there. That is the Holy Ghost. You walk away from your sin. You walk away from your past. You give yourself to Jesus tonight. You come. Receive His forgiveness. Receive His mercy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Adam. Come on. Jonah. Come on, Samson, come on, Peter, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, there's more of you, there's a stirring in your heart, it's like a mile, he's beating a thousand miles, oh, your heart is beating a thousand miles an hour. That's the Holy Ghost talking to you. That's the Holy Ghost wooing you. You leave your seat and you come tonight and give yourself to this amazing Jesus. Come on. Come on, 30 more seconds. We're going to wait for you. We're going to wait for you. Every life matters. You matter. Oh, come on, church. Keep on clapping. Keep on praying. This is what heaven is interested in. More joy in heaven over one sinner that repents than 99 charismatics just having a good old time in church. Come on. Come on. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost still pulling. Walk, 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 walk. Leave your seat now and come. Leave your seat now and come. Leave your seat now and come. Come on. Come on. Come on, while people are still walking, let's give it up for this amazing band. That is 20 out of 10 every single service.
Put your hand on your heart tonight. Forget about everybody. Pray this prayer with me right now. Every one of you, Jesus loves you. I pray this prayer right now. I say, Lord Jesus, I give myself back to you. I believe with all my heart, you are the Christ, the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe you rose from the grave. I believe you are alive. Tonight, I open my heart and I invite you, Jesus Christ, to be my Lord and Savior. Thank you for a fresh start, for a new beginning. Tonight, I come home. I'm born again. I receive your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen and amen. Come on, let's give Jesus a massive praise. We can never forget the lost and the backslider and the prodigal. Every service, they are our special guests. Every time the Holy Spirit is in operation, the Holy Spirit, by the way, is the Lord of the harvest. John chapter 16, he convicts the world of sin. We can't just shut him off. He's the number one evangelist in the world. No man can say Jesus is Lord but by the Spirit. Give the Holy Spirit a chance to operate in your ministry and in your lives every single time. God bless you. I don't know what we're going to do with these people because I want to pray for other people. What are we doing? Do you want to go to heaven? No, I'm just playing. Otherwise, we just go like... <laughs> No, you are going to heaven, but now you need to live this life. So if you're not in a church, Planet Shakers, the address will be up there. Sunday you come to that church because this is where you came back to God, gave your life to Jesus, Planet Shakers. You come here. You come to this church. They'll show you where the venue is. You need to be planted in a church. You need to become part of a family. The church is the hope of the world. That's how God operates. God doesn't work apart from the church. God works through the church. Joel chapter 3, the Lord will roar from Zion. That follows Joel chapter 2. God operates through the local church, not apart from the local church. So if you don't love the local church and you're not in a local church, a conference like this will help you nothing. Somebody has to tell you the truth, and I don't mind. Unity planted in a church. You can't, you're not a pot plant, a grasshopper, a kangaroo Christian. Tie me kangaroo down. Tie me down tied in the church. Amen. Um, I believe that God is talking to people that are born again here tonight, um, and especially in the place of regret, and I'm not even going to ask you to come forward. Um, watching on television, I don't know who you are, but I walk with God's very personal, very private, and certain things are very private. Um, Africa is a big thing now. People want to do every miracle on a platform, and amazingly, Jesus didn't. Jesus didn't need to prove himself, and neither does God. God doesn't have to prove his existence to anybody. Sometimes we want to see things because we want God to prove himself. God is. <laughs> he doesn't have to prove himself to you or anybody else. He is. That's why the Bible says the fool says in his heart there's no God. Oh, we want to see a miracle so people can believe there's a God. No, they know there's a God because every person has been created. Romans chapter 1 says with the knowledge that there is a God. Don't minimize God, reduce God to your understanding. God is. He doesn't have to prove himself to anyone. I've had tremendous powerful encounters with God in meetings, but very often in my private chamber I've had the most traumatic encounters because sometimes things are private. How many of you know that if a woman travails, we're not going to put her on the platform, yeah? And she's going to give birth in front of everybody. But yet in the church, we want to put everything on public display. Some things are deep and intimate, and it's reserved for intimacy between an individual and God, especially when we talk about things like this. We're not going to walk somebody down. But I want to encourage everybody in this place tonight. I, I, I really, you know, when there's an urgency... Um, I felt a tremendous urgency in my spirit with this message for somebody. And I ask you to respect this moment, the very fact that you've come to this meeting, whoever you are. You may be 17. You may be 70. I don't know. But I know that God doesn't make mistakes. And I know that God is not finished with you. And I know that God will heal your pain and God will remove your shame. And this is what God told me. I wrote it down. 
I'll give you a run at it once again. But this time you're going to run differently. I'm going to give you a run at it once again. It's going to have you breathe again. It's going to have you laugh again, live again. And only He can do that as we just draw close to Him and we allow Him, the saturating rain of His presence, to remove the dearth, to remove the barrenness, to remove the shame, the hurt, whatever it is. If we will just lay ourselves upon the altar like Aaron's rod and we will allow the presence of God to come, that rod that is dry and dead will bud again. God will cause life to come, but it's under His mercy. It's under His mercy. It's, it's never apart from His mercy. He's a merciful high priest. That's why the Bible says we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with us. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. We all need mercy. You can just be in a place of stagnation as a pastor. I don't care what the reason is. It doesn't matter. I've gone through patches in ministry where I just thought, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm being honest with you. When our church was exploding in Bloomington, every time I landed there, I just thought, what am I doing here? And I, I just wanted to get out of the place. And I had a battle for years. Then in Pretoria. I want to tell you that God is merciful and His mercy will keep you in the right place. When we lean on His mercy, and it's such a fine line to be confident, Godfident, whatever your terminology is, Sometimes we say Godfident, but we're confident in our own ability, etc. Every man of God that does anything great for God has had to learn to lean on the grace, the mercy, because we all start out very self-reliant, and then people sing praises, and we believe social media. So I don't read social media at all. I'll just put my phone away sometimes. And I have a huge ministry, massive. But I just put my phone off for a week. Don't talk to anybody because I don't need to. Because I'm not a slave to social technology. I'm not a slave to a fan club. I don't need somebody else's approval. I don't need somebody else's little like or, 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 or I don't need that. We don't become addicted to the people's praise and the people's applause because it will, it, Satan knows exactly how to blow you up. Your strength will also be your weakness. They run parallel. Respect your strength and protect it with your life more than anything else. The very gift God gives you can become the greatest challenge that you have. I had a wise man, Ralph Neighbor, in my time when our church just exploded, God brought, it, brought elder men into my life, and I thank God for them. And uh, I used to do offerings. I could get people to give everything. Now we build buildings, cash, etc. I don't do offerings. People say, how do you do it? I just tell people, we'll be building a building, and if you want to give there, because I was warned by a man of God, he said to me, you have the power to influence people. You, I've seen one other person in my life have that power and misuse it. He said, be careful. Don't, you, don't use the power that God gave you to get people to do even what they don't want to do. And I said, God, I will back off. I will not. I will not. So we put our offering right at the end of the service as a by the way thing. Because when you have a certain gift, you can use it. And sometimes you can go over the line. So you have to understand your grace, your gift, and then the boundary that God gives you. And walk dependent on the grace of God because that's, that's really is the call of God or anything I, you do in business. My brother who builds shopping centers all over, it's, 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 it's a fine line. At any moment, you can tip off this side. I'm not, I'm not saying it. And the higher you go, any mountaineer will tell you, the more you need the right oxygen and the right relationships. So I pray tonight for everybody, whoever you are, wherever you are, that we all will live totally reliant on the grace and the mercy of God. And if you're in a place that I spoke about tonight, we're going to sing that song and the Holy Spirit will do what He wants to do. Maybe all you have to do, Samson, he didn't fall on the ground and beat the ground. I've had times where God moved in me with no tears and no emotion. 
It's a decision. I'm getting up. I'm going on. I put the past behind me. God, you spoke to me. Oh, come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. Begin to give him a little bit of a praise in this place tonight. Your, 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 your greatest days are ahead of you. The best is yet to come. It is not a cliche. The glory of the latter rain is always greater than the glory of the former rain in your personal private life as well. If you will allow Jesus to be your Savior and your Redeemer, and you will trust Him to sustain you and keep you and walk you through people's criticism, opinions, and rejection. Because what people have to say in the end of the day matters nothing. Tomorrow they're talking about somebody else. It's what God says that better matter everything in your life. And God says forgiven. God says justified. God says sanctified. God says righteous. God says blessed. Oh, come on in the name of Jesus. It's what God says that matters in the name of Jesus. You have a future. You have a hope. I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, let his rain come tonight again. A rain of restoration. young person. You heard what Pastor John said. You're not going to be like your father. You're not going to be like your grandfather. You're not going to make that mistake again. Tonight is the glory and the lifter of your head. He's going to give you a run at it again. He's going to give you a run at it again. Come on, rain. Oh, come, Jesus. Rain down your glory, your goodness, your mercy, your love. We're going to go higher. Higher than ever before. Come on, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Let your mercy fall in this place. Wash away my sin. Wash away my shame. Restore me, O oh God. Come on again.
See, God rains down his mercy. God rains down his love right here. He wants you to receive his love. Would you just lift your hands a few more moments? Father, right here, right now, we release your love. We receive it by faith. We receive grace, joy, peace in the name of Jesus. Come and fly. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He knows your pain. He knows your shame. He says, Give it to me. So take me. So take me. So take me. So take me higher. So take me higher. So take me higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So take me higher. So take me higher. So take me.
praise you. For you are holy. Amazing, amazing, amazing word tonight. Amazing. Watch this, watch this. A great friend of mine over there, Pastor Martin Seal, wrote a book. And it says this, a title, I love it. It's Shame Off You. See, the devil will say shame on you. But God says shame off you. You are free. You're free. Now, tomorrow, is there any announcement we've got to make? Just quickly come here because we're going to party for a few moments. It's Friday night. The clubs are just starting down the road. We're going to turn it up here. Quick, quick, quick. So tomorrow, 10 a.m. start, 9.15, doors are going to open. Well, what an amazing night here at Planet Shakers Conference 2019. Pastor Art Boshoff bringing the most amazing word. We truly believe that you have been uh, just so impacted at home. And do tell us, do share your testimonies with us because we know that there are thousands of you watching from all over the world. And we want to give you a little shout out. So you're watching from Japan, the Philippines, South Africa, Malaysia, Melbourne, Zambia, Singapore, Indonesia, Sweden, Thailand, India, USA, Vietnam, Estonia, Qatar, Nigeria, Spain, Uganda, Ukraine, South Korea, Congo, Romania, Taiwan, Kuwait, Italy, Germany, Brazil, Trinidad, Sri Lanka, England, France, Dominican Republic. Oh my goodness, so many places. Bulgaria. Oh my goodness, I'm so tired. I can't even talk. Honduras. Amazing. Thank you so much for tuning in wherever you are and do not miss out tuning in tomorrow. We have our very own Pastor Sam Evans bringing the word tomorrow morning. It is going to be so powerful so life-changing. If you've ever watched a Planet Shakers conference before, she's often the, the benchmark of what God is going to do in this place. We know it's going to blow up. So set your alarms. We're going to be back here live. We're starting slightly later tomorrow morning. So 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, which means we are going to go live from 9.45 a.m. So do whatever you can. Tune in tomorrow. We love you. God bless you. And we'll see you tomorrow for the final day of Planet Shakers Conference Rain 2019. Sleep well.
My name's Nick, I'm from Austin, Texas, and I choose Jesus over everything. It's Yai, and I choose Jesus over everything. I'm Ashley from Cape Town, and I choose Jesus over everything. I'm Ryan from Singapore, and I choose Jesus over everything. I'm John. I'm Martina. My name's Cameron. I'm Aaliyah. I'm Troy. I'm Charlotte. My name's Rolando. I'm Darcy. My name's Tom. I'm Marco. I'm Jazz. Hi, I'm Richard, and I'm from Cape Town, and I choose Jesus over everything. People don't know this, that Planet Shakers is more than a band or a conference. In fact, in 2004, we started Planet Shakers Church here in Melbourne. Now we have campuses all over the world. In fact, we've seen over 80,000 people saved here in our Melbourne campus. And it's been life-changing and powerful. Usually, we record our albums at Planet Shakers Conference, but this time, we wanted to show you what happens at Planet what you hear on this album and what you see in the videos is actually what's happening every single week here at Planet Shakers Church. It's a place full of joy, full of praise, full of passion. Pastor David, what are you doing in my kit? Is that my lemonade? Well, yeah, it is, but I knew you'd want me to make myself at home. I know how you are. They kicked him out then. No big deal. I mean, so they kick him out it is my house, and that is my lemonade. Is, is that Robert Morris? When religion kicks you out, Jesus will come find you. Oh, that's good. I'm borrowing that for sure. Your house, Pastor David. Eat those cheese balls. <laughs> hey, Tim. I know. I know I've got your tie here, but I really look good in this color. I mean, Pastor Jamie, I'm not going to lie. Any tie you wear of mine, you're going to look good in it. But why are you oh, even in on, my heart? This is so good. Yep, you're watching Pastor Robert Morris, too. He's a pretty popular guy today, I guess. Everybody in this house breaking in, watching Robert. Bless life, bless church, bless everything. Nothing in heaven or earth, nothing, and nothing you do. Bad enough for God not to look. That's a good word right there. Man, I couldn't have said that better myself. <laughs> 